Hey on YouTube, Silver Joker here. Well, I went down to see my local coin store owner down at Franklin Street Coin, Phil, and uh, we talked a little bit about the new V75 Eagle and why the premiums are so high on that thing after uh, they sold out at the Mint and how that's calculated. And um, my sister dropped by to uh, make her first silver purchase. That's right, my sister's going to start stacking silver better late than never. So she came down and uh, Phil talked to her a little bit about stacking and and um, you know what goes into that and some of the silver and how it's valuated. And so I'll just let that play and let you guys hear uh, kind of the uh, conversation that they had, that we had. So if you're interested in any of that, stick around. All right, so what? Do you, so we were talking a little bit about the um, the uh, V seventy five mm -hmm. Eagle down there, and yeah. the, and the, and the mm -hmm. premium, the incredible premium on there. There's a big premium on them. Um, again, based on the mintage, you're going to find huge premiums on most silver eagles. It's a highly collected series, and anytime there's a low mintage in the series, it's going to it's going to create a huge demand for the eagle for people to want to have one of every eagle along the way. So. And this is kind of the last burst for the 2020 design, um, you know, from 1986 to 2020. It's been one design, and supposedly they're supposed to change it next year. I have not seen the new design. So, you, so do you see them? Um, I mean, because I, I know you have one. You have the gold one down there too. Can, can we take a look at those? Just mm -hmm. for the people that haven't seen them. Um, because I haven't seen the gold one. Uh, well, that, I haven't seen any of them. That's the half ounce gold. Yeah. That is World War II. That is very nice. They also had a one ounce V seventy five. Yeah, I won't take it out of there. Eagle, and then of course the silver one ounce V seventy five Eagle. Yeah, that's the first ever privy, isn't it? That they yes. ever put on there. And then uh, they had the medals, the end of World War II medals, which are yeah. pretty. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah, and and these are exactly the same, yes. except for they have the. Uh, and then you had the olive branch, um, which oh, I like the, the design on the olive branch. Uh, yeah. These are holding the olive branch, so yeah. it's kind of the end of World War II um, metal. Now that's that's pretty nice. I do like that, but like I said, there's a lot of a lot of a lot of un unused surface on there, which is which is okay. Uh, but this gold one is fair, man. You know, there's just something about gold. I don't, I'm not really into gold, but man, you can't deny the beauty of the reverse of that's really pretty, too. Uh, you mind if I, yeah, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to, okay, there. It comes out pretty easy, huh? All right. Oh, yeah, look at that. I didn't, I don't think I've seen the reverse on that. My camera focus all this upside down. That is nice. That's an impressive, uh, and this is a coin. That is a coin, it's yes. It's a coin. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I think it's $25 value, $25. I think. Yeah. That is nice. Now that's just the regular gold eagle, the yeah. one ounce gold eagle with the privy mark on it. So, uh, but the mintage was so low that again, it's probably will be the lowest um, Minted eagle. Ever. I can't imagine them going much lower than wow. the 1900. That's so minted. it is that unique. It is to collectors. Yes, mm -hmm. if you if you collect gold eagles or if you just collect key dates, I think it will be a key date down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it holds at 10,000, I don't know. Right. Um, that's all that remains to be seen. These all have a premium right now, and whether they hold at that premium, uh, time will tell. I mean, right. that's all I can say. Uh, yeah. You just don't know whether it'll settle into. This coin, the 95W, had such a low mintage that it's helped, it's maintained its value over the years. Now, what these other coins will do in the last few years because of similar mintages, mm -hmm. uh, that, again, remains to be seen. Whether the 95W will start losing some traction, too, I don't know. Um, I don't believe it will. And, again, here's 
here's my thinking on on all of these things when you have a, an initial rush of people buying um, coins you know five six times what the mint was offering them at you know at, at base price there's going to be a, a, a bunch of people that sell at that point so your new collector base is going to be a new price point for that coin so you know your $85 coin that people are putting up there for four or five hundred dollars okay that's only going to last so long you know at best it's going to last 30,000 sales that's how many coins they made mm. so once those people are done selling their coins and making their three or four hundred dollars on the coin the new collector base the new per people holding the coins are in the coin now at three four five hundred dollars so that becomes your new base right, in terms of you. you know what they're willing to sell it at down mm -hmm. the road they know they've got three or four hundred dollars invested in it so to them it's a four hundred dollar coin you know um, so they may they may take 350 they may take four whatever they're willing to take but I think what happens is this wave of people making good money at the beginning lasts for a short period of time mm -hmm. they take it they run with it and then you have the people that want to hold the coin and that becomes whatever they paid for the coin kind of becomes the new base of what they feel the coin is worth that makes sense and so over time that you know that slowly either goes up or slowly comes down a little bit but I think once the initial waves over you don't have people coming out um, I mean, you may have people that still have a 95W in the gold set that you know they paid back in 1995 for, but there aren't that many people left. So most people that own a 95W Silver Eagle right now um, have invested over $2,000, $2,500 in the coins, mm -hmm. and that's what they value the coin at. So to them, they're not going to let it go for much less than that. Right. So I think that's what happens with these types of, of things, too. Once it settles into an average price that... The second wave of people pay that becomes your kind of collector base yeah. and then over time depending on how many collectors enter the market or exit the market that either drives it up a little bit or drives it down a little bit and, and eventually it becomes kind of a standard price for the coin. all right so it was this point that my sister arrived she came down to make her first silver purchase i think she was being real cautious they want to spend a whole lot of money first time i think she's um She's been shopping around online, going to a lot of the online bullion dealers, and trying to get an idea of exactly what she wants to uh, what she wants to get and what she wants to spend. So I convinced her to come down here and talk to Phil a little bit about silver and how to uh, how to buy it. And uh, so that's what she did. So she came down here. She didn't buy much uh, because, I, like I said, I think she wants to really do a, a lot of the online uh, bullion shopping. That's the kind of person she is. So I'll let you guys hear how that went, and uh, I'll talk to you uh, on the flip side. Doesn't I mean silver maintains its value for the most part? So, yeah. and most people they set a budget, and then every week yeah. they come in and buy a few ounces, and before you know it, you got a big old stack of <laughs> bullion. And, you know, that's uh, you know, uh, in the future it's going to be inflation proof, basically, because. In the future, it's going to take more dollars to produce this one ounce. Like today, you're going to buy it at whatever the price is, at you know where the spot price is and the premium. But in the future, it's going to take more to produce this one ounce. So you're buying this now, but in the future, this one ounce is going to be worth more because it's going to cost more to make it, and that's inflation. So if you buy it now, you're basically inflation-proofing your savings, okay. mitigating the effects of, of inflation because you're buying it now. So, what you normally probably end up deciding is that probably your one ounce rounds or ten ounce bars or five ounce bars are probably your better buy in terms of you're just trying to collect silver because mm -hmm. of the weight and the price, and that's yeah. kind of what you you have to weigh right now is what am I paying and what am I getting in terms of weight, pure silver, how much silver am I getting whether it's ninety percent or pure silver, and how much am I paying for it based on where silver selling today. I mean, you can't control where, where it sells tomorrow or the right. next, next right. week, but your best option is um, looking at what it sells today and trying to buy close to that. Yeah. And typically your one ounce silver rounds are probably... Yeah. And once well, you start buying, you'll see all types of different things available, yeah. and then you'll be able to make, you know, kind of figure out what you're paying per right. ounce and figure out whether it's something you... If it's something you want to pay extra for because you like it, that's fine, but... Yeah. Um, if you're just looking for silver, you want to kind of stay close to where silver selling that particular day. 
All right, so uh, that's going to conclude our trip down here to Franklin Street Coin with my sister and <laughs> Phil. I think he's uh, educated her to a certain level. I'll take it from here, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take from here, so we're gonna we're gonna buy some silver. So we'll do that off camera. So uh, I'll show you guys what we picked up when I get to the house. Thanks, Phil. Thank you. Yeah, didn't buy much today. Believe it or not, I am on a budget. <laughs> so today really was just about meeting my sister down there and have her talk to Phil a little bit. And um, you know, I think that went over very well. I mean, she's more of a online shopper. I mean, she does all of her shopping online. So I think that's where she's gonna settle out buying her silver from online bullion dealers but i just wanted her to come down and get an idea of what you know buying silver is all about um, what to look for uh, kind of the different uh, ways silver is sold and the different weights and that kind of stuff and i think phil did a good job explaining it to her um i think she had a good time too i think she enjoyed seeing all the different types of silver down there the slab silver and some of the older coins some of the collector things that phil had in the shop so i think it went over very well but the point was she realizes that um you know these fiat dollars are not really reliable that you're gambling you're taking a risk when you decide that you're going to hold on to those fiat dollars as far as um into the future uh you got to have fiat dollars as we know to shop and buy what you need we got to have those but at some point we're going to need something uh with a little more um intrinsic value something that's going to have value beyond uh the dollar and i think silver does that and i think she's convinced that that's the way it is and i think more and more people are starting to become more convinced that silver or precious metals in general is becoming a, a more popular um place to put your money a more popular place to invest your dollars for the future and i think that's a good thing so you know, we're going to do everything we can to help you out with that on my channel and some of the other channels that uh, that I work with. So anyway, I think it went over very well. My sister's not a big talker. I don't think she realized that I wanted her to be on camera. Uh, so she uh, she didn't uh, she wasn't she wasn't that talker. wasn't that that into uh, interviewing on on camera, which is okay. I mean that's her personality. But anyway, so this is what I picked up. I like these um, these hundred dollar bills here. These silver hundred dollar bills at four ounces i got a ton of these things um but phil was selling these for just his regular uh generic silver prices it wasn't a premium on these and if you've bought these in the past you know that they put a premium on them i don't know why i don't buy them with a premium all the ones that i have i bought well there's a few that i bought way back that i paid a heck of a lot of money for but when you see me with these um you know lately in my later videos uh, it's because, you know, they were being sold at just regular generic prices because that's really all you're going to get for these. There, there's really no reason for them to have a premium because nobody's going to buy them from you at a premium unless you find somebody that's collecting them and wants to pay you a premium for them because they're really just your generic silver. But anyway, so I guess that's all I really want to say today. I just want to show you guys a little interaction I had with my sister down at Phil and talk a little bit about that phenomenally high price premium uh, v75 um, american silver eagle man that thing right there you know i'm gonna have to have one because i you know i'm a, I'm a eagle collector i have all the eagles so i'm gonna have to have this it's the only one with the privy mark on it so i'm gonna have to get it uh and i know a few places that i can get it from but you know i should have tried to get it from the uh from the mint but i'm just not into that kind of stuff i just don't I don't like paying really high premiums for silver. Now I will, like in this case, I will because I have to have that eagle uh, for my um, eagle collection. Uh, but for the most part, I don't put, I don't buy silver like that. I don't spend uh, that kind of money for an ounce of silver. It's just not uh, not part of my plan. But anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. I got a lot of real neat stuff coming up. Uh, I'm going to give a, uh, I'm going to do a giveaway when my channel reaches 25,000 subscribers, 25,000 subscribers. <laughs> I never imagined that I would be even saying that, let alone reaching that. But, you know, I'm at 23 and 23,900 right now. So I think I can go 25,000 before the end of the year. Um, but when I reach 25,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a really nice giveaway. You guys know if you've, if you've seen my giveaways in the past and on the other channels that I like to give away nice stuff. So uh, this is going to be a nice one. So at 25,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. So you want to pay attention for that because I'll let you know how you get in on that. 
in one of the videos. Anyway, so I appreciate you guys stopping by. If you want to see more, uh, subscribe, ring that bell. You'll be notified as soon as I put out another video. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up. Thumbs up really helped my channel out. You can uh, follow me over on Instagram. I post pictures there uh, from time to time, stuff that you don't necessarily see on my channel. And you know, if you got to go outside, wear a mask. It is that important. The only way we're going to beat this thing is all of us working together uh, to, um, you know, do what's right. Anyway, I appreciate you guys stopping by. Let's just keep the silver train rolling. Peace.